Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in New York. Well, I'll tell you, I'm glad I'm far more worried about the content of what I speak rather than the views that I give you because I can't get good lighting here because of this whole outlook I'm on is a hill. But I'll give you some photographs at the end of this. Well, my adventure this morning started out because the Holy Spirit told me last night I was going to come to this outlook I never came to before. And he told me this morning that I was going to stop and eat at a diner. But, you know, it's hard for me to, you know, everybody's always telling me that I don't talk to God. Well, he proved it to me as always because, well, it turns out when I stopped at this place to eat, which he got me there at a perfect time by having my neighbor need a ride. And because I went and gave them a ride, it put me at that diner right then, where I wouldn't have been there otherwise at that time. <laughs> so it turns out there was a group of people there talking about Christianity and Jesus and America being a Christian nation. And they were talking about Israel and all of that stuff. And well, you know, I mean, I, I would always love to chime in on these conversations, but the Holy Spirit told me I was not there to talk. I was only there to listen. So I listened to these folks talk. And then later on, the conversation switched over to um, that evidently a couple weeks ago, I hadn't heard this in the news, but they've been listening to it. So evidently, there's been people dropping rocks off of the 283 highway bridge through people's windshields. Well, I hope you all understand that that's what Jesus was talking about when he talked about the demons who are going to be here at the end of the age. Those folks that are willing to drop rocks through people's windshield and risk killing people for the entertainment's sake, they are pure selfishness, friend. They ain't got a lick of love in them. They don't have any empathy whatsoever, and they don't think about anything they do. Now, kids do that stuff usually not adults because kids don't think about what they're thinking about I know friend I used to be one of those kids but we never put anything through somebody's windshield because I knew that was a disaster though when I was real young I was really stupid you know what, what am I what can I tell you but on the other hand you know, this has become, this world has become a dreadful place, even though it's a wonderful place because a Christian nation, you know, you've got freedom, but you were supposed to have freedom to do the right thing, and we chose to have the freedom to do the wrong one. And I'm not blaming anybody for it because there's nobody to blame. We're all at fault, right? But the only ones that really were supposed to know any better are those that knew Jesus. They're the ones that knew that the purpose of the world is to come to know love by experience if they did the things Jesus asked, right? Because he said that those that hear my sayings and put them into practice will build themselves their houses on a rock. And because they built their house on a rock, it'll stand at the end of the age when the storm hits. Then he told you about the f five out of ten brides weren't going to have enough oil for their lamp. Well, I just hope the folks at that table have been putting oil in their lamp because they clearly do not see the fact that those people they were talking about are the demons that are here for the end of the age. And the dead in Christ aren't raising out of the cemetery, friend. Now, see, I don't know those people, so I don't know whether, whether they have oil for their lamps or not. But if they haven't been doing the things Jesus asked, if they're just making judgments on folks and they haven't come to know love by experience, well then, they're going to be the dead in Christ that have to rise first before my father takes his crop, right? Because you don't think that my father's just going to let the Christians just do nothing and let him throw his entire crop into, into the furnace. I mean, come on now, folks. I hope you're really thinking better than that. Because this was a Christian nation. It declared itself one nation under God. And we were delivered a clean nation, friend. There were no cities full of this insanity that we've got going on. And we have my father's name on our money. There's a price for all this. And I know you all don't want to think about it. And I sure don't want to be the one to tell you. Because I'll tell you, anytime anybody speaks the truth, you all want to cast them from the vineyard. And I know that. 
but I promised my father my life and my death, and therefore whatever he needs, I'm going to give him. And if me not talking would stop it from coming, well, then I would not say a word. But the truth is, they already done built those underground arcs that I've been telling you all about. You already know it's coming. You already know that if you've done anything of the things that I've told you, because I've been telling you, I've told you where to go look at the right videos, to see what America has done has been being done over and over and over since Rome. And every time the world or the nation that rises becomes selfish, it falls. This isn't anything new, friend. But this one did it in the name of Christ. So this time Christ breaks the seal. Do you get that? Because he's not going to let Satan ring. Satan is a publicly traded corporation. That is the thought of Satan made flesh. Now, the riders of the beast have built underground arcs, and they think they're going to go underground and come back up and steal my father's age. And it's just not going to happen. And I'm warning you about that in advance. So if you're one of those folks that think you're going to get away with that, you're just not. And I hate to tell you that, but it's the truth. And Revelation told you that. Revelation told you they'd hide in their caves and they'd pray for death and death wouldn't come. So now you've heard it from me if you didn't hear from somebody else. So now if you were one of those folks who were planning on trying to steal my father's age, now know that it's time to repent. Don't mind anybody else but what Christ said, because what Christ said told you the truth. He told you that the salt that loses its flavor is not even worthy of the manure pile. The manure pile were the people that were left suffering like Lazarus, and the people that had salt but lost its flavor were the rich men that left Lazarus starve outside of his gate. And because that rich man lost his flavor, meaning he became selfish and greedy instead of doing what Christ asked, well, then he's going to find himself across the great divide, right? And so, and it, there's no sense in throwing him back in the manure pile because the manure pile is only to create more love and a greater crop from my father. So therefore, that rich man is only since he had salt that lost its flavor he's going to be cast out and trampled underfoot meaning he's not going to he's not worthy of entering the kingdom jesus told you all that friend he told you at the end of the age that he was going to deny those that glorified themselves in his name he said those that prayed prophesied cast out demons in his name were not going to enter his kingdom well friend you don't need to believe a word I say, but you need to believe every word Christ said. And these Pharisees of the Christian church are hypocrites and they're telling you lies. So I'm telling you that it's time for you to go listen to what Jesus said. Because if you don't, you're going to be found with no oil for your lamp. And because when my father comes to remove the helper, well, only those that are the spirit of love are helping. And therefore, those are the ones that he's taking. So those that glorified themselves and left rich men starve outside of their gate and declared themselves righteous in Christ, well, they're the ones that are going to find themselves across the great divide. And you don't have to believe it because I said it, but you do because Jesus did. He told you all this, friend. He gave you parable after parable. I'm only putting multiple parables together so that you may understand that all the parables keep saying the same thing. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. By the measure in which you judge, you will be judged. By your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. These are all words of Christ, friends. So if he was your savior, let him save you. Stop listening to the Pharisees and go get a red letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said and read and then repent, meaning admit you're wrong and change your mind. And then do what Jesus said. He told you that the Holy Spirit would testify to you about him, right? So what he's telling you is that if you go read his words and you get to know him really well, that you will get to know my father. And then my father will testify to you about himself through the Son. There's a whole lot going on there, and I don't have time to put it all in this video. I've been telling you all things over and over and different things in different ways. But if you all don't make a uh, a new choice. My father is going to judge this nation, and I've told you that multiple times. 
and nobody wants to listen to me. And the reason he told me not to talk to those folks at that diner was because he told me that I'm the wilderness goat, right? I'm, I'm supposed to stay in the wilderness because every time I talk to people, they get upset and they judge me for talking about what Jesus said because the Christians swear up and down that Jesus is a liar and their Pharisees are their saviors. And if you believe that, friend, you've believed the wrong thing. Jesus told you that do not listen to them. He said, get to know him. He said, because I go to the Father, the Father is going to give you the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. And even though what he said was true, even greater truths will you be given. Yet how many of you won't even believe that you can receive the Holy Spirit because some Pharisee told you that you couldn't? Well, that's because if you could do that, they don't have a job. Get that? So understand, I don't need to be a preacher at some church. You don't even need to listen to me, friend. You've got Christ. But if you're not going to hear him, you should hear me, because if you don't hear one of us, you're going to hear none of us. And then you're going to get cast into the darkness, and there's going to be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I'm not saying that hell's for eternity. Jesus never said that. Your Pharisees said that. They took a bunch of misinterpretations and ran with it. Jesus only mentioned Hades once, and Hades was from the Greek pagan religion. And therefore, if you will go look and listen to rabbis, you will see that even to this day, Jews do not believe in hell. That was a Greek religion. So your pope took and mixed Christianity which was supposed to be grafted into the Jews and mixed it with the Greeks because the Pope was trying to use the church to control the population. That is why Constantine hitched a ride on the church. Nobody wants to look at that. They don't want to look at the truth. Understand that Krimpus and all of that, Santa Claus and your elves, those elves were actually demons from another religion. You get that, right? And they punished people. So, I mean, I hope you're going to go understand things. And you've got rabbits laying Easter eggs. You understand that is actually from another pagan religion, right? The god of goddess of fertility. You've got the Yule Log. In the Norse religion, they used to sacrifice people on those. So understand that everything about your Christian religion has been mixed up and stirred up with a bunch of paganism, and Christ told you not to do that. He told you, I don't come to remove not one jot or tittle from the law. He didn't want you, if my father would have wanted you to celebrate Christ's birthday once a year, then his birthday would have been written down. He wanted you to celebrate his birth every day because he came to represent the Alpha and the Omega, and you're supposed to celebrate God every day, day in and day out, because he's your creator. It's the only reason you were created, so that my father may know love by experience. But my father created your neighbor for the same thing. So if you don't want to love your neighbor and thereby love your father, because Jesus said that hang all the laws and all the prophets on only two commandments and one was like the other. So if you don't want to do that, my father doesn't want you in his kingdom because just like you mucked this one up, you're going to do the same to that one. Jesus told you all about this. So I'm sure hoping you're going to go read those parables and quit listening to a bunch of Pharisees wiggle half a tongue. The serpent in the garden was a serpent because it wiggled half a tongue. That's what's significant about a serpent, friend. Jesus told you that was a liar from the beginning. It'll always tell you half-truths right? That's the liar that's in your head. It's not out here, it's in here. But then when two or more gather in its name, it manifests out here. And a bunch of people gathered in its name and manifested in flesh called a publicly traded corporation, as I've already mentioned. Because they are entities with no consciousness, yet they are pure selfishness. They're created and designed to make money and make money alone. And Jesus told you that you could not serve both God and money. You will love one, hate the other, be loyal to one, despise the other. Now, either Jesus is a truth teller or he's a liar. He's the truth and the life, or he's not. Just the other day, one of the people that listened to my videos came on here and said Christ was Satan. Do you get that? That Christ was the devil. That's how lost this world is, friend. 
because Christians aren't listening to what Jesus said. They're listening to what the Pharisees said. And the Pharisees said, once saved, always saved. And that was a lie from the beginning. It'll be a lie from the end. And I'll call any man that says it a liar. Because Jesus told them they were. Because he told you he was going to deny them and they were going to pay twice the debt at the end of the age. So please, friend, I'm asking you to go read what Jesus said. Do what he asked and receive the greater kingdom. But if you do not, you will not enter my Father's kingdom because free will will always freely be given. But because you're still the spirit of selfishness now, he cannot let you into that kingdom. You have to become the spirit of love. What Jesus talked about, about falling on the rock and being broken to pieces, that's two pieces. Love and selfishness, right? You're not going to be perfect, but you're going to choose love over selfishness because Jesus said a student is not greater than his teacher. It's enough to be like him. So that's what you're going to do if you want to know Christ, if you want into Christ's kingdom. If you don't, you're going to choose selfishness over love. And you're going to ride through the end of the age, which is where hell is. And you can see that if you look. But if you don't look, then you won't see it. Oh, hi. How y'all doing? Sorry, I, I will I'll shut off my camera. Well, friend, I was out on that outlook. And some ladies come out there for the first time to this outlook and looking to have lunch. So I decided it was time to depart and go on my way. So just know that I love you because my Father loves you. And may God bless you and yours.